So we're doing a biblical journey and personal discipleship, uh, lesson 11. Uh, Pastor Rich wanted to be here, he just couldn't. Uh, but I thank Pastor for the opportunity to preach this evening. Uh, so lesson 11, as we kind of get into this biblical journey and personal discipleship, um, we're going to look at the financial stewardship um, of the believer. So James chapter 1 and verse 17, we're going to kind of start there and kind of go through it. It says, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, uh, which, uh, with whom is no variable, neither shadow of turning. Let's pray. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day you've given to us. Thank you for the weather. Pray that you just be with us tonight that we can learn something from your word. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. So, um... This week, yes, I am excited for the snow, even though it's kind of a little treacherous. We did lose power for a little bit at our house. Uh, not as much as some. We just lost for about 13 hours, um, but doing well now. Um, we have built two snowmen at my house, uh, so I do enjoy the snow for those that give me a hard time for it. If you don't, it's fine. You can beat your house with the heater. Uh, we love the snow, love being in it. Uh, was out there plowing with Pastor Kennedy today and just having a grand old time. So with it, I did enjoy the snow. I'm, I am praying for more, even though I'm praying that we can come to church on Sunday. Um, but financial stewardship, we'll look at that tonight. Um, God provides everything we have. Um, as we see that every good gift and uh, that God gives us in James 1. So God gives us those things. God provides everything we have. Everything we have in our life, God has given us. Um, and we can think about it. You can think about anything that you have, God has given you. God made it all, and he gave us all things to richly enjoy. So you ought to enjoy all the blessings that God has given you. Um, and we'll kind of talk about what those look like. Uh, Psalm 24 and verse 1, it says, The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. So God is the owner of of all. God's the owner of everything. Uh, he owns all of it. So we ought to treat it accordingly. Um, it's not ours, it's the Lord's, which makes us stewards. We are the stewards of his blessing. Your next blank, if you, don't, you haven't had the notes, it's, there's a link there for you to get the notes. You can fill them out. We'll also have them uh, on Sunday as well if you need them or if you like to have the paper copies for your lessons thus far. Um, we are the stewards of his blessings uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 2. Um, this is one of those ideas that's of being a steward. You're like, okay, I understand the principle of it. Um, but doing it is a very hard thing, at least it is for me, uh, until somebody explained it to me in a way that I'm going to explain it to you in a second. So 1 Corinthians 4 and verse 2 it says, moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. So we are stewards of what God has given us. So with it, if you're like me, it's really easy to clean someone else's house. Or it's really easy to find something that's messy at somebody else's house and want to fix it or clean it. But when it comes to my house, I'm like, oh, I could do that tomorrow. Right? Does anybody else like me? Um, and it's the same thing where you can tell someone what to do to make their life better or to help them manage their finances to have their finances be better. Uh, but when it comes to our life, we're like, oh, well. And so that's what a steward is. God's saying, hey, here's what I've given you. You need to steward what I've given you um, the way that I would have you to steward it. And when you're faithful over a little, he'll make you faithful over much. So we ought to steward the blessings that God's given us. That's our physical possessions, that's our monetary possessions, and then that's the people that he's given us. If you're a parent, you want to steward your children as the Lord because they're not yours. They're the Lord's. He's given them to you as a gift, and you ought to steward them and raise them the way that he would have you to raise them. Um, they are blessings, um, and we ought to just treat them accordingly. Uh, we... At the end of our life, we'll have to give an account to the blessings that God has given us. Go to Romans chapter 14. And we're going to kind of look at how God says that we ought to give an account to those things in our life. Romans chapter 14, look at verses 10 and 12, or 10 through 12. But why doth thou judge thy brother? Or why doth thou set at not thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. 
For it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then, every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. That is, that we will give an account of our stewardship. Uh, how we stewarded all the things that God's given us, all the opportunities God's given us. We're going to give an account to how we handled those situations uh, in our life, how we handled the blessings that God gave us, how we handle everything in life, our attitude, uh, our life in general, we're to give an account to. And I believe one of them is going to be what the monetary gifts that God's given us. We're going to give an account to how we spent them. Did we spend them the way that God would have us to spend them? Um, secondly, God's word instructs us to give. Uh, it's not necessarily, it's not an Old Testament thing. It's not a New Testament thing. It's an old scripture thing. And so we're going to kind of see that, how we ought to steward our lives. Genesis 14 verse 20 says, And blessed be the most high God, which had delivered thine enemy into thy hand. And he gave him tithes of all. Uh, Genesis 28, 22, it tells us what the tithe is. And this stone, which I have set for a pillar, shall be God's house. And of all thou shalt give me, I will surely give a tenth unto thee. Um, a tenth is, the, is, is a tenth, it's 10%. Um, and then in 1 Corinthians, in Paul's epistles, 1 Corinthians 16, verse 2, it says, Upon the first day of the week, let every one uh, of you lay by him in store, as God hath prospered him, that there be no gathering when I come. So it's that, that we ought to give on the first day of the week. The cool thing with today is that we ought to, the principle that God's teaching here is that you ought to give um, off the first fruits. Right off the bat, the first day of the week, you'd bring your tithe uh, to the to the storehouse to the church, and give it. Uh, glad today for me, it's easier. I love giving online, um, and what we do at our house is so if I get paid on a Wednesday, we tithe right on that Wednesday. Um, it just kind of works out really well for us. So it's the first thing that happens at our house when we give, and um, at our house we give off the gross not off the net. I think that that's a biblical thing to do, but it's between you and the Lord on what you would do there. Um, and so you ought to give on a regular basis. It's not just when some extra money comes in or whatever. You ought to give regularly, um, constantly. If you get paid every week, you ought to tithe every week. If you get paid every bi-weekly, you ought to tithe bi-weekly. If you get paid monthly, you ought to give monthly. Um, and it's just showing, hey, it's not you know, we're going to pay rent, mortgage, and all these other things, and then we'll tithe what's left over. God says, no, I want you to tithe off the first fruits. The check comes in, the tithe goes out. Uh, and I think that does something for you, and it honors the Lord. It does something for you saying, hey, God has the first uh, place in my heart, and I'm going to give to show that. Um, and we just do that at our house. At, at, at our house, we've done that. And God's always blessed which gives into the next couple things we're going to look at. Um, how we ought to give, we ought to give by grace. In 2 Corinthians 8, verse 1 through 4, go ahead and turn there, 2 Corinthians chapter 8. I know you have it in your notes, but it's just good to turn in your Bible. Hopefully you have it as you're watching live stream, have your Bible with you. It just kind of helps eliminate distractions. So verses two, uh, we'll start in verse 2. 2 Corinthians 8, verse 2. It says, How that is great trial of affliction and abundance of their joy, and their deep poverty abounded unto the rich of their liberty. For to their power I bear record, yea, and, be, and behold their power, they were willing of themselves, pray us with much entreaty, that we would receive the gift and take upon us the fellowship of the ministry of to the saints. So it didn't say that they gave their abundance, they gave of their poverty. They gave what they could give when they were asked to give it. Um, so you ought to give by grace, and then you ought to give willingly. Um, in 2 Corinthians uh, verse 9, so just this one chapter over, in verse 7, it says, Every man according as he hath purposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. So, 
Uh, I've probably told the story before, but it's just one that kind of shows how not to give. So I was in a missions conference uh, here at Open Door, and it was one of those nights that, that we were going to do an offering, and God told me, hey, you need to give what's in your wallet. So kind of paid the other bills and stuff like that, or didn't rather tithe an offering, so this would be an offering on top. And it's like, well, you need to put what's in your wallet in the plate. And I'm like, well, Lord, I'm not going to do it. So I'm sitting in the back row over here, um, and I can see the ushers are coming, and I'm talking with the Lord. I'm like, well, I'm not going to give in. Like, this is all the money I have left until the next payday. Uh, I have to fill my truck. Like, there's just no way I could give this. And I'm arguing with the Lord uh, as the ushers are coming. I can see them. They can see me. And I'm like, I'm not going to do this. And finally, as the ushers got halfway down, I'm like, okay, Lord, I'll give it. But if it falls out, I'll know that I stepped out in faith, but you said I can keep it anyways. So the ushers are coming back. I pull it out. I put it in the offering, and I'm watching it. I mean like a hawk. I'm like, this thing's going to pop out. The Lord's going to trust my faith, and I can keep it. Well, it didn't pop out, and I said, okay, Lord, well, looks like I'm not going to be able to go to work. I don't have any gas. Like, it's just whatever. I'm going to obey you. Well, I went home that night, and I just, you know, had a bad spirit about the whole thing. Um, right? I put the Lord first, and now I have no money, and blah. Well, I show up to work the next day, and a coworker comes out and says, hey, I need to give you this money. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, I didn't buy lunch. Like, you didn't owe me anything. Um, and he's like, no, 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 I have to give you this money. I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, no, I didn't come to church last night, but I was supposed to. And the Lord said, I have to give you this money. So you need to take it because the Lord told me to give it to you. And I'm looking at him like, you're, you're, you're messing with me, right? And he's like, no, man, I'm like deadpan serious. So I take it and I look at it and it's exactly what I put in the night before. And I look up and I look at him and I look up and I look at him and I'm like, you're, you're messing with me. And, he, and he, he's like, no, I'm dead serious. And I look at the Lord and I said, okay. And I learned at that moment that, you know what, God already knows the need before I have it. God knew that if I give it in faith that he's going to take, take care of the need. Now you're like, does that happen every time you give? If I just put money in the plate, God's just going to miraculously do it. No. There's been times where I've given it, and the Lord just didn't miraculously have somebody come and give me a gift. But I learned faith along the way that, you know what, no matter what I do, if I trust the Lord, He'll take care of my needs. Um, I've never missed a meal unwillingly. I've never missed a payment. And you're like, why? It's because God is faithful. God's always met my need, and He's met more than my need with an abundance. I mean, we're, if you live in America, some of the blessed people. We have abundance. We have garages that we can't park cars in, like my house. We just are blessed. We have this thing and then that thing as well, and we're like, whoa. I mean, it's just, we're, we're just a blessed people, and God's just always taking care of us. Um, one thing, so when we first got married, uh, I told Jess, I said, hey, kind of how we're going to do giving. Um, Jess didn't really understand it when we first got married. I said, well, when it comes to a special offering, what will happen is so you'll pray what the Lord would have you to give, and I'll pray what the Lord would have me to give, and then we'll come together and talk about it, and we'll give whatever number's higher. Well, uh, if you're the one that does the money at your house, you kind of understand the budget and how it works. It's how we do it at our house. So I'm doing the numbers. And so we, right before, a week before pastor is going to have the offering, I go to Jess to say, okay, what number did the Lord give you? And then I'll tell you what number the Lord gave me. And then we'll just give whatever's higher. Well, she's new to this whole thing. Well, she gives like a big number. And I'm like, you're just hyper spiritual. Because you just got this big number you just kind of threw out of the abyss that the Lord told you. No, I'm just kidding. And mine was like this little number, and I'm like, well, maybe I just don't have any faith. <laughs> maybe my wife just has more faith than me. Well, we decided to give her a number, and, you know, it hurt more than I wanted it to. Um, but it was that, that idea that, hey, I don't need to worry about it. God's going to take care of the need before we have it. We just need to trust him. And when you put the Lord first, he takes care of it. 
Um, I remember one time at Open Door that giving willingly, pastor's done it I think twice since I've been on staff, and where we do trade places with God, where you keep 10% and give 90. And I remember specifically I did it one time when I was single, and then we've done it one time since I've been married. And you look at it and you're like, man, we don't really give the Lord a whole bunch. When you switch the numbers like that, and you're like, well, I'm going to live off the 10 and give the 90. And I'm like, hmm. The Lord does so much and blesses so much with the little we give him. And so we ought to just thank the Lord for all the things he lets us to have. Because if you look at it mathematically, God owns everything. We learned about that in the first point. God owns everything. God gave you the strength you have to make the money that you have. He gives you the brain to function, to have the job you have, to make the income you have. And God says, hey, so I've given you 100%. I just asked for 10% back. I mean, mathematically, that's a great deal all in general. If somebody gave me 100% of something and said, oh, I just want 10% back, well, that sounds great. Um, and at Open Door, we believe in grace giving. We believe that you ought to give what the Lord would have you to give. Uh, my opinion is where God has been so good, why would I stop with the 10th? Because God gave everything for us. Uh, and then we'll kind of look at this next point. God rewards our giving. God rewards our giving. God will meet our needs. Always has, if you're looking. Go to Philippians chapter 4. And look at verse 19. It says, But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. God always has, if you're looking. Now, you might look at it, you're like, well, man, I just gave what I was going to buy, you know, a new couch set or new outfit or whatever with. I just gave it. I don't know how I'm going to get it. Well, if all of a sudden you go shopping and a deal pops up or whatever, and you're like, wait a minute, I was just looking for that thing. Where I've seen it where all of a sudden you go to get a good deal and you go to Value Village or Goodwill or whatever and you find a brand new pair of pants or suit or whatever and you're like, this is brand new, like no one's ever worn it. And you get it for, you know, 80% off. Well, I look at that as a blessing. Like the Lord just met my need. Most of the time it's my want. But what is that? The Lord met those. And we just have to be looking for them and realizing that, hey, God's doing these things. Um, you get a deal or a break on a car repair or something, and all of a sudden they're like, well, you got a deal for this. And you're like, well, I just saved money because the Lord blessed. And we just got to think about it that way and look at it that way. The Lord takes care of those that takes care of him. Um, God doesn't need our money. The church doesn't need our money. But we need to give so that we can show the Lord that we love him. God will bless our gift. Go to Luke chapter 6. And look at verse 38. It says, Give, and it shall be given unto you, good measure, pressed down, and shaken together. And running over, shall men give unto your bosom. For with the same measure that ye mean, wherewithal shall be measured to you again. This experience it, that same thing when I gave that missions offering, the Lord blessed in spite of me. Had a bad attitude, didn't want to do it, didn't want to give it, didn't want any of that. But I gave it, and the Lord, what, he measured it to me again from the hand of someone else. And the, with that point, that we ought to be givers. I know we're in the spirit of giving, in the season of giving. It's better to give than to receive. Um, but it was that given, it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together, shall men give unto your bosom. With that same thing of idea of stewarding God's giving and blessing, is if the Lord puts on your heart to do something or to give something to some individual, do it. Why? Because he's using you to bless that person. The same thing with that coworker of mine that gave me that gift. He didn't have to, but what did the Lord put on his part to give? And what did it do? It taught me a lesson about giving. 
And you can kind of see how the Lord works it out. It doesn't make sense, but the Lord just does those things. The Lord kind of works it all out to make it work for us. And we remember that God owns the cattle on a thousand hills. You can't outgive God. If you give, He gives. And God is a better giver. God's a better giver than we are. There's been times in my life where I've been the beneficiary of gifts that are not needed, not wanted, or not needed, and not deserved. Because God is a bigger giver than I am. There's been times where um, I was going in to try to get a, my first apartment, and it was just a miraculous that they even let me move in. But it was one of those where I signed it, not knowing that I'd have the money to put down the deposit. And just by circumstances, all of a sudden, a couple days later, that money just happened to come to me, and I'm like, why? Not that I'm great or did anything great, but just the Lord said, hey, I'm going to take care of your need. And the longer I live and the longer I'm saved, the more I realize, you know what? Man, God takes care of a lot of my wants as well. And it's not that I'm a great Christian. It's not any of that. It's just that God is good. And he just goes above and beyond what we can ask or think. We just have to put him first. It's not the smartest thing to give first. I understand that money can be tight and things like that, but if you put the Lord first, He always takes care of you. And it takes faith. It's that, hey, you look at the numbers and you're like, man, I just, I look at the budget and we've sat down, Jess and I, a couple times in the past and we've looked at the budget and we're like, it's in the red every time. But when you look at it and you look back and you're like, you know what, I'm glad that we never not tithed and we never went backwards. And why? Because you know what? The God just takes care of the need. He always takes care of it. And God's allowed us to just, you know what, have nice things. And I'm not against them. But God's just blessed. And you just got to put him first. But God will bless your gift. He'll bless others and he'll bless you. You look at it this way when pastor says, hey, you know, if you don't like the way that the budget is or you don't like any of that, then just don't give a part of it. But I like it because, you know what, you give and then all of a sudden you see, just like this last Sunday when we tithe, we pay for the lights, we pay for the water, we pay for all of that stuff, the heat to be on. And what is it? When the Lord sees that, when all of a sudden when those two young men came forward to get saved and they went back and they got saved with men, and what was that? That goes to your account. Because you tithe to keep the lights on. You tithe to keep the water running. You tithe to keep the heat on. You tithe for the building. Well, what is that? That all goes to your account. The Lord looks at that and says, hey, you had, you had a nice facility that these people were able to come and get saved at. Why? Because you gave. God blesses our gifts. When we give to missions and we hear missions report on Sunday nights where someone gets saved or a new church gets started or um, whatever the need is, the Lord's like to say, hey, your gift helped that. Your missions gave that. And that's why when we look forward to this benevolence offering coming up, the same thing Jess and I are praying about, hey, what should we give? And it's that idea that, hey, man, I'm excited to see those families. Now, we're not going to see them or know them. I mean, pastor's just going to say who gets it, and that's how it works. But it's one of those where, you know, I'm excited to be a part of that family's Christmas could be changed um, because we were able to have a small part in it. You're like, man, I can only give $5 or $10 or whatever it is. The woman with the two mites gave, and we're still talking about it today. So it's not the amount of the gift. It's the heart behind the gift. And then God will multiply fruit to your account, as we've been talking about. 
God isn't pleased with necessarily, hey, the man that gave, you know, the $10,000 gift. He's more pleased with the guy that gave all that he had with his heart. Which is why we talk about the woman with, that gave two mites, why she gave all she had. I think when she came to church, she's like, man, I can't wait to go to church because I'm going to give this. I'm going to give men, the Lord's blessed me and I'm going to give this. The Lord's always highlighted people that came to the end of their ropes and kind of gave them, and I don't have anything, but they gave anyways. You look at the widow woman that had, that gave the, that had the bread and the oil with her son until Elijah and fed him. That's all they had. This is the piecemeal that we have, but gave it anyways. And God blessed it, and they continued to eat. You look at the little boy that came, brought us some loaves and fishes. He had a little, you know, lunchable and said, hey, this is all I've got. And God, you know, fed 5,000. God takes our menial little bit and magnifies it. We just have to be good stewards of what he's given us. God will multiple fruit to our account if we just trust him. Go to Philippians chapter 4. And look at verse 19. It says, But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So that's our memory verse for this next week. And if you've got your memory verse for last week, you can comment it in there just to kind of see who was memorizing their verses, what the scripture memory was last week. But that takeaway for today that my God shall supply all of your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Either God's a liar or God's going to supply all of my need. It doesn't say he's going to supply all of my wants. Now I believe I'm blessed and the Lord has supplied a lot of them. But God says, hey, I know the need. I'll take care of you. The psalmist said, I've been young and I've been old. And I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor a seed begging bread. Man, God loves you. God wants to take care of you. And you're like, well, how, how do we know that? Well, we give because he gave. And if you're watching and you don't understand the gift that God has given us, he gave us in John 3, 16. He says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. But do you know, if you have questions about salvation, you've never accepted the free gift of salvation, you can go to our realhopenw.org website and get the answers to salvation, or you can comment in there and have one of the pastoral team reach out to you. But what is it? We can give because God first gave. God gave everything he was, is, and is going to be to you for free. All you have to do is accept it. So in our biblical journey of stewardship, we should just give. Give not because the church needs it. Don't give because I asked for it or passed for whatever. Give because you ought to, because it shows that you love the Lord. We used to say, let me see your checkbook, and I'll tell you where your heart's at. Because what you give to is where your heart's at. And we ought to just remember that, hey, God gave us everything, and I just want to steward it the best of my ability for how he would have me to steward everything that's already his and the little bit that he's allowed me to have while I'm here on earth.